Gross. I hate licorice. Gross. Oh, thanks. Hot chocolate. Mm. Where are my marshmallows? There are enough marshmallows for both of us. But you've got heaps there. Do you want one of these ones? Ooh. <laughs> the Expendables is all about the crusty 80s and 90s action heroes with bullets, spraying, explosion surfing and bad guy owning. And you'd think it would make the best recipe for a co-op shooter. And now, to tie in with the movie sequel, we have just that. This is not the same. Like jelly bean? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's <laughs> shit. Arcade and dual stick shooters can be a fun distraction, especially if they're well made and especially with friends. The first thing you notice about this game, however, is much like the 80s and 90s action heroes themselves, it's pretty rough around the edges. You begin by choosing from one of four expendables, Barney, Yin, Gunner and Caesar, each with their own unique weapons and skill set, with basic upgrades as you level your character up. The animations in the cutscenes are pretty awful and Sly sound alike is a bit dopey. Dopey, but would you say accurate? He's me, a real bad apple and a skilled sniper. Pretty good sniper. Actually, it's pretty spot on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While you're waiting for the game to start, the character models march around like they have something shoved up their butts, but as soon as the level's loaded, it's crazy time. Like the films, little time is wasted on the plot, so you're thrown straight into the action. You can switch between your two weapons to pelt bullets in the direction of swarming enemies, as well as pick up other random weapons which are scattered about each level. But Hex, I felt none of the guns were really doing any damage, and it was difficult to see where the bullets are going, so aiming with the right stick was vague. Yeah, some of my favourite top-down shooters or dual-stick shooters have really overemphasised bullet animation, so that you always know you're hitting your intended target, and the characters are so small on screen that I think you really need that. Here, you're kind of just squinting at the screen and hoping you're doing some decent damage. Even when using the RPG with a laser sight, it was so all over the place. I was like, is this rocket going where I need it to? I, I don't know. Yeah, the only gun that's worth using is the shotgun because you can actually see where that spread is hitting. Shoot in any direction and you hit a body! And playing as Sly, I generally found I'd be better off with the dual pistols I started with. Uh, that's a nice weapon, but it's wasted on this guy that or just charging in and melee attacking my way through. However, this is better achieved when playing as Yin, as he has a set of knives that make his melee kills way more effective. If you go down, your AI teammates are pretty quick to come to your rescue, which is good, and when playing with friends, the more people who jump in on a heel, the quicker you get back up and into the action. But those signature kills, Hex, they were very brutal. For a start, you just mowing down waves and waves of shirtless goons, and then you, you zoom in for these really devastating kills. Yeah, I mean, a small downloadable game is hardly going to go into the complex moral choices of something like Spec Ops, but it did feel a bit unnecessary. I did like the way all the text appeared in and around the levels, though, giving you tips or indications of what you needed to do next. Occasionally, you'll be required to switch to a certain character to set off charges or open a door while others covered your back. But these moments were few and far between, with most of your time spent in haphazard bullet spray. Yeah, even worse are those helicopter missions, which just seem to drag on and on. You're just switching between a chain gun and a rocket launcher, attempting to mow down everything and anyone in your path, which often just ends really abruptly when you're thrown to a score screen. Visually, it's not bad to look at. Some of the in-game animations are a little rough, though. There are four chapters to play through, and you'll spend most of your time in desert bunker and cargo environments. Helicopters and tanks will burst into areas. Wave after wave of countless enemies will come pouring onto the screen with flamethrowers and RPGs as you scramble to complete an objective while keeping your teammates alive. This one is still breathing. I like that they put in a cover system, but I did find it a bit fiddly. There's just this rudimentary design to this game, which makes it feel like a rush job, and it probably was. Yeah, plus things get really hectic on screen later on, which makes it even harder to see where you're aiming, especially when going for enemies on higher ground. But, I don't know, despite that, I did enjoy the chaos a little bit. 
but all the levels just look and feel the same way to play through. There's just a real lack of imagination and thought in the way these areas have been constructed that might see you wanting to put the controller down pretty quickly. I don't want to do anything you think is fun, Headcase. Well, to be honest, we weren't expecting that much from Expandables 2, and it delivered on that, so I'm giving it 4 out of 10 rubber chickens. Yeah, it's a few steps further in the wrong direction for movie tie-in games, so I'm giving it 3. Right, now, nighttime in-games can offer a unique challenge for a developer, but it can also open up gameplay possibilities. Yes, and they also give us something to fear, as Goose finds out. Is it? Oh, cheers. cheers. Oh, come on, that's so depressing. No. Just give me one. No. Just stop get it. Stuff, Just give me stuff. one. <laughs>